We're Marie and John Cortine, and we're originally from Liverpool in England. All our ancestors were from Ireland, so uh, we've basically come home to live, and uh, we've been here about 13 years now. Our passions in life are, uh, certainly music is a big part of our life. Yeah. Uh, we love animals, we live in a very rural place. It's a little piece of heaven, is what we say, and you yeah. wouldn't... Uh, you wouldn't want to be anywhere else. On a bad day, it's good. On a good day, it's fantastic. We were absolutely horrified when they came to tell us they were building turbines because we said we could sit outside and hear a leaf drop and we were worried about the noise and worried about them being installed and not, not at all happy that they were going to spoil our little piece of heaven until they were finished. We were still worried about um, traffic and, and different other things. We thought, Jeepers, that's big. It's huge. Uh, I've seen them from a distance. I've never seen one close up before. And uh, they went up and they carried on with the construction. And as I say now, we've lived with them for some years. And this was a beautiful place before the windmills. It's still a beautiful place with the windmills. We'd, we could think of far worse neighbours to have, so uh, we're quite <laughs> happy with them. We, you know, it's, it doesn't really, it doesn't impact on us at all. When you go and stand underneath one, they're, yeah. they're actually amazing to see. Um, Make you dizzy if you look up at them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as for noise, sometimes you can't, we can't hear them in the house at all and we'd be surrounded by them. I wouldn't know how many there are, there are a lot of, a lot of them. In the house, we can't hear them at all. Sometimes when you're outside, you can hear a sound from them, which I find is uh, quite a rhythmical sound. I would say that the music that we record up here and we play, the windmills don't, don't feature. I mean, we recorded two uh, very popular albums up here in this in this tiny studio uh, using quite sensitive recording equipment and not not a problem not a bother the only thing that stops us recording is the rain but we've got no uh, we've got no control over that so <laughs> <laughs> we we sort of said uh, we we couldn't afford sculptures because we think of them as being sculptures and we we said we couldn't afford to put sculptures up like, like this. I was born in England. Uh, my parents were both Irish, were born, were born in this general area, southwest Cork. Eventually I became a lecturer in computer science at Middlesex University in London um, and I was there for about seven years. When we first came over here we had a cottage for some years and then uh, we of course when we moved from England we discovered that it was far too small so we wanted something bigger and in fact we, we moved um, probably half a mile closer to the windmills which I happen to like enormously. Well, I think we probably wouldn't have come here if we felt that the windmills were going to be intrusive because we do spend a lot of time outside the house. But um, as my wife said, there's more noise coming from farm implements. You know, uh, people who think the countryside is quiet are mistaken. In this, this community, as far as I know, that there's nobody who's actively against them at all. Um, and people seem to be quite proud of them, actually. Yeah, my name is Noel Welch. I live here in Upper Place, Clamaris, County Mayo. I have a wife and three kids, and we have a, the Equestrian Centre. And uh, we have about 50 horses here on the site, and we do a lot of horse lessons here all week long. This area here is the highest arable ground in Mayo. So what I mean is the highest flat ground in Mayo. So I thought it would be suitable for putting up a few turbines. The turbines are 55 metres high. They're 800 kilowatt machines and they're producing 2.4 megawatts. They'd like Clamaris up, my local town. 
I have six brothers and two sisters. I think we thought, my brothers saw it when I was a student at the beginning, they thought I was mad. They actually said, what are you at? And I said, well, I think renewables is what we've got to start going down the road. And then I applied for the grid. I put my deposit down on the grid and I secured the grid. And the brothers started to say, maybe you are doing the right thing. That's turbine one, turbine two, turbine three across the road. This is the equestrian centre. The horses are up here all the time grazing. We have no problems with anything. They actually come up here at night time and they sit there, they lie underneath the turbines here. Because there's all stone up here and they lie up here. Well, people bring horses here all the time for shows. And we've had a show last year underneath the turbines and strange horses, they had never, didn't even look at the turbines. And the horses get in the boxes there all the time. They never flip or right. I've never seen any problems with them. I've moved out here, probably I'm here now about four months ago, actually living here. As an owner of horses myself, I mean, my there, I don't see any issue with them. Um, as an owner of the horse and seeing my horses around them, um, there's absolutely no problem. I mean, they don't even notice them. Um, the field that's kind of up at the back here, I would do a lot of cross-country work up there, which would be very close proximity to the turbine. And I mean, they don't even blink at them. I, I think they're brilliant. I love them. I get up in the mornings, I look up my bedroom window, and I see my turbine spin, and I say, that's brilliant. They're lighting up tomorrow's. The parish of Cora, in which we reside, is situated between, you could say, Bantry, Drumalee, Skibbereen and Bellady Hob on the west side. You're in the heart of West Cork and what would be termed in European terms severely disadvantaged country, but you're right in the heart of it and I would imagine that from the point of view of an economy intended that the main factors would be tourism and farming. I suppose when the proposal was first put forward, th there was no immediate reaction to it. But it was only when the planning permission was granted and we were more or less getting to the development and the planning stage that people began to take notice and there was quite an amount of resentment to it. And, and I attended a number of meetings in Bantry organised by, you know, this action group and I became disillusioned with, 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 with the tone and the tenor of the meetings because th they were totally negative and anybody at the meeting couldn't see anything positive and I thought that there were positives to be taken from it and that rather than dwelling on the negatives it would be much more important and better for the community if we dwelt on the positives. It became very divisive in the community to be honest but thankfully at this stage now that the turbines are up and running. All the divisiveness in the community has vanished, evaporated. There's nobody, you know what I mean, could say that a fellow with any neighbour or lost friends or anything because of it. But the fact is, as it is presently situated, nobody seems to notice it. Nobody talks about it. Nobody has any interest whatsoever in, 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 in any aspect of it whatsoever. It is just now part of the land scene down here and as such, it doesn't impact on the community or anybody in their daily lives or anything like that. One of the things, you know what I mean, that disappointed me most of all was the fact that all the media attention was on the one side. The other side, you know, was not catered for nobody wanted to. Views of the people who are supportive of it, all the media attention was on the negative side. And I said that had a, an impact on public opinion as well. Well, it doesn't impact at all on us here, you know, a number of people near them, you know what I mean, who had concerns earlier on are quite happy with them now and said that they're not impacting on their daily lives, but not making no impact whatsoever. A lot of years ago we used to live over in the UK and we lived on the Lancashire coast and we were in between two nuclear power stations, which is Sellafield and Hesham. I'd, I'd far rather have windmills than nuclear power stations, you know, dotted around me. Or yeah. a big chimney pumping out black smoke with yeah. you don't know what, what's in it, so it's quite happy. The nice nice neighbours. <laughs> yeah.
Well, I think if there's a, a proposal for wind farms in the area that you live in, I think it would be, you need to do your own research and satisfy yourself that all the information that you're being given is actually factual. I mean, go online. I think there's a lot of information there online now too that, that will set people straight. I think there's an awful lot of bad publicity put out there on the turbines that shouldn't be there at all. For anybody who's, you know, genuinely concerned about the economic state of the country or our future going forward, we have to look at alternative sources of energy. And, the, you know, it, it just doesn't make economic sense to think that we have to keep importing oil from the Middle East at enormous prices for ever and ever and ever for to fuel our needs. We have to face the fact that we need greener energy. And personally, I, I think I would much prefer windmills uh, at the moment um, because they seem to be the best way of achieving those ends. We have to start doing renewables, it's something we have to do. I mean, I'm looking at the solar panels next. We have to use renewables. And with the country, is, we're full of wind. Let's make use of it. The one thing that I would hate to happen is that down the road, maybe not in our time and our generation, but down the road, that some morning people would get up and they'd have no power to even cook the breakfast, do their normal daily chores and things like that. And we've wasted all these wonderful opportunities where we can generate electricity from wind. I think it makes an awful lot of sense from the economic point of view and, and I, I genuinely think that any community that gets the opportunity you know, to contribute to it and to be compensated for their involvement, I think they'd be very foolish not to, not, not, not to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm.